Hello again. Thank you for watching our program again today. This is Pastor Rick Corelli speaking to you, wherever you are. May you have a blessed day, evening, night, whatever it is. And we've been talking about spiritual warfare. In particular, the whole armor of God is found in Ephesians chapter 6. Yesterday, we emphasized that uh, verse uh, in uh, verse 10. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Or become stronger and stronger. It's not a static situation to be strong, but keep being stronger and stronger. And as I mentioned yesterday, the Holy Spirit was really quickening this verse to me uh, the night before. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's a word for all of us. You know, I think on a whole, and I mean the large majority of us Christians, believers, we're not aggressive enough when it comes to the enemy. Over the years, it's easy to become passive. Passivity is an enemy, okay? And, uh, you know, we were sort of in this Christian routine and we're enjoying God and we're enjoying life and we go from day to day, but uh, maybe we're not as aggressive or violent against our spiritual enemy. I once read about Gordon Lindsay, founder of Christ for the Nations located in Dallas, Texas. He said this, every day we should have one good strong prayer against Satan. And uh, I think there's a lot of wisdom there. One one time throughout the day, uh, and, I, and I would use the word command because you're not asking the devil to leave, you're commanding the devil to leave. And by the way, you don't ask Jesus to command the devil to leave, okay? That's your responsible, uh, responsibility. Jesus has done everything that he needed to do to defeat the enemy. Now he's given that authority and power over to us and we are expected by him to use it. So never pray, dear Jesus, uh, rebuke this enemy for me. Dear Jesus, command this spirit to leave. No, that's a wrong, wrong type of thinking. It's wrong praying. Instead, it's always a command, a direct command to the enemy. Jesus cast out many demons in his ministry. And uh, believe me, it wasn't asking or begging or pleading. It was a direct, powerful command. And that's how we are to approach uh, speaking to the enemy. Commanding, a better word than praying. So be strong in the Lord. Uh, continuous, active, energetic, moving forward. At times, directly coming against him. Now, let me add this. Uh, this is important to me. <laughs> and uh, I think you'll understand where I'm going. Uh, Many years ago now, and I'm, I'm glad it was many years ago, I, I went through the worst crisis in my life. And uh, man, I felt like it was the end of my life and everything had fallen apart and it was time for me to go home and to heaven, or I was hoping it was heaven. It was bad. So uh, I was rebuking the enemy left and right. Man, I was rebuking the enemy all day. And I'll tell you, things just weren't getting any better. Uh, the Lord was helping me, and I had good people around me, so it wasn't like uh, I was hopeless or I wasn't giving up. I was close, but I wasn't. And uh, I spoke with a brother in the Lord, a fellow pastor, a really good guy, and uh, he had a lot of spiritual discernment. And he said, Rick, uh, you're, uh, you're rebuking the devil all day. Uh, your mind should be on Jesus. And I thought, oh, well, that's a good idea. That's a real good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> My mind should be on Jesus. Oh, I learned a big lesson that day. Still learning it. You know, my mind's not on the devil all day. At times there is. At times he comes against me, comes against you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I use the name of Jesus. I use the blood of Jesus, tell him to leave. 
But my focus on the day is not fighting the devil, uh, coming against evil spirits. That's not my major focus. I'm not obsessed with that and demonology. I'm, I've got my mind on Jesus and, oh, his goodness and his love. And uh, that's, way, that's the way we should be thinking. Now, there is spiritual warfare. Definitely there's times. Uh, maybe you have an intercessory group and spiritual warfare uh, is a vital part of your intercessory group. But remember, Jesus comes first. Keep your mind on Jesus, okay? Don't be so preoccupied with the devil that he sort of takes first place over Jesus. It really happened to me. I mean, it actually happened to me. And my life was revolutionized by this great word from a real good brother, you know, this incredible word. Uh, Rick, put your mind on Jesus. Keep it on Jesus. I thought, oh, yeah. I'm learning. Believe me, I'm learning. I've had my ups and downs, so. Well, anyway, let's get back to spiritual warfare. Be strong in the Lord. Get stronger. And the power, that explosive power of his might. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. Believe me, your, 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 your enemy, your mother-in-law is not your enemy. Your, your wife, your husband, they're not your enemy. You're fighting spiritual enemies, okay? So do your best with your mother-in-law, okay? It's a good word. Stand, verse 14. Stand by girding your waist with truth. Okay, now notice he's going into the various parts of the armor of God. And he says, uh, your loins girded with truth, or uh, the modern translations would say the belt of truth. Now notice where he starts with the belt of truth. Everything begins with the Word of God, see? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Logos there in John chapter 1 is talking about the person of Jesus Christ. You know, we have the Word of God, the Logos. We have the Rhema. It's all about Jesus. But everything begins with the Word of God. You have to know the Bible. Now, somebody told me this once. If I can talk you into believing something about God, another person can follow behind me and talk you out of it. Yes, if I'm, human, you, if I'm using human persuasion or human logic or human philosophy, and in college I majored in philosophy, maybe I'll devote a program to talking about that. That was interesting. Uh, after all the philosophy that I learned, when I started studying the Bible properly, I had to unlearn all that. But that's another story for another time, okay? So uh, it's not by our human reasoning. It's not by our human logic or human philosophies. We have to know the Word of God. We have to know the Bible, you see? And if you know the Word of God and you have revelation of it, then nobody can shake you out of it. You can't be talked out of it because you're standing strong in the Word of God. So when we're talking about the whole armor of God, this is where Paul begins. you got to know the Word, as we mention all the time on his program. You have to have uh, it tied around your waist, as we say. The belt of truth, okay? Uh, what's a belt do? It totally surrounds you, doesn't it? Or it should. Okay? Totally surrounded. Your, your being is totally surrounded and saturated and covered by the Word of God. You want to defeat the enemy in your life? You want to claim the victory of Jesus in your life against the enemy? You better know the Word. And you better keep studying the Word. Because believe me, without the Word, you're nothing. Talking about getting stronger every day. Without the Word, you're getting weaker every day. Or you're staying the same. Smith Wigglesworth said you never stay the same. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. Okay. Now, it says, uh, gird yourself around your waist with the belt of truth. Okay. 
the belt of truth. Now, this word gird, it's an old English word, uh, but the original definitions of it are quite important and speak about what it really means. It means to bind around with a girdle, but also in preparation, you're binding this thing around you in preparation for bodily exercise or exertion. So, when you wrap this girdle around your waist, covered your whole waist, surrounded your body, it was a preparation for bodily exercise or exertion. In chapter 12 of the book of Luke and also uh, chapter 17, it talks about girding yourself for service. You see, when we're putting on the armor of God, we're getting ready for spiritual exercise and sometimes spiritual exertion. Amen? Yes. We're not putting on the belt of truth just to have the belt of truth on. Oh, we're getting ready. We're getting ready for spiritual confrontation because we're grounded in the word. We're in the battle already knowing it's been won by Jesus Christ, and he did it at Calvary. He did it for you and me, and we need to claim it and get that revelation. Righteousness, belt of, breastplate of righteousness. Now, let me go back to Psalm 91, verse 4, real quick. It says, His truth will be a shield and a buckler. Well, the buckler is the belt, okay? Old Testament word. But uh, in Hebrew, the word for truth, which can all some people translate it faithfulness, the root word is aman, where we get our English word amen, or the Russians say it differently, amin, and things like that. You know, his truth, now we're starting with uh, the belt of truth, girded, our waist is girded about with truth, and uh, the truth is the word, we got to know that, and it says here in uh, Psalm 91 that his truth is, uh, his faithfulness surrounds us, so there's a reference right there to amen, can be translated so be it, so it is, this is the way it is. What the Word says is what God says, and the Word always works. Remember that. The Word works. The Word works when you apply it to your life. Gird yourself. Now, 1 Peter says this, gird up the loins of your mind. Well, prepare your mind. Protect your mind. Strengthen your mind because that's where the battle is. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, we're to cast down imagination and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing in captivity every thought. See, the battle is in the mind. Your spirit man has already been given to Jesus. But the soul, which is composed of uh, the intellect, the emotions, and the will, uh, that needs constant work. That's a process of constant sanctification. It doesn't happen with a one-time experience like salvation or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, see? So we're constantly girding up the loins of our mind with the truth, you know? And again, girding it up signifies a preparation for action, a preparation for spiritual exercise, and a preparation for spiritual exertion if needed. Oh, my. How can we lose? Oh, we're not meant to lose. We're not meant to be defeated. We're not meant to be cast down. Oh, no, no, no way. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Are you lacking joy today? Do you feel like, oh, wow, I used to be so happy serving God. It was a joy, and now it seems to be a drudgery. Oh, life, becomes, life has become hard. And, oh, it's, uh, I don't know, serving Christ isn't what it used to be, and 
I love God, I'll never leave him, but something's missing. Well, joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, no joy, no strength. So let's pray right now. It's about the middle of our show. Let's take a, a moment and go before the Lord. Father, I want to thank you for what you're speaking to us. I want to thank you for every person out there watching. Uh, Lord, you don't mean for us to be walking around without joy. We know life is not easy, but it doesn't have to be uh, just sorrow after sorrow after sorrow. God, I pray for those who maybe have lost the joy that they once had, that from this day forward, they would come into a new revelation of you, of the person of Christ. They would not define their life by trouble after trouble, but joy, peace, and contentment. Thank you, Lord. Each day you're teaching us through your spirit. Each day we're learning. Wow, and one day we'll be with you. And thank you for this, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm getting a word from the Lord right now. Uh, someone, they suffered a terrible wound in the back of their ear, sort of like where the ear and the head meet. Uh, something like uh, maybe it was struck with a, a piece of wood or, or maybe some like a hammer hit you or something like that. It's in the back of the ear and uh, I crushed, it actually crushed some bones into very small parts, very minute parts. And uh, you've had operations, more than one on this, and the doctors have tried their best, but the pain is still there. The pain is still there. Right now, God's setting you free from that pain. We come against that pain in the mighty name of Jesus, and we declare that this person is already totally healed, that the bones have been placed back in their original uh, location. Every bone is properly mended and related to the other bone. And every pain, no more pain, the pain is gone and sometimes it's been really severe, causing headaches. Now that pain is gone and we declare that and we receive it as done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, uh, I'll just share what, I'm, what I think I'm getting from the Lord is uh, there's women out there, you're trying to breastfeed your children and uh, it's, a real, it's been a real problem for you and uh, it's been difficult, it's been, it's, it's been hurting you but uh, this is something that you really want to do. You really want to nurse your child. And, uh, you know, it's been very difficult for you up until this point. You love that new child. You just love that child totally. It's, it's brought a new life. It's all new and it's all wonderful. But there's been pain here with your, with your breastfeeding. And right now, Father, in Jesus' name, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, pain, leave. Leave these wonderful, loving, caring women of God. All they want to do is love that child and nurture that child and feed that child. And Lord, you don't want them to have pain. You got nothing to do with this pain. And we come against the enemy. We're talking about spiritual enemies. We come against any enemy in the name of Jesus that's trying to cause the pain. From this day forward, we declare no more pain, that this will be a joy that this will be uh, effective in feeding the baby and the baby will have a good disposition and the mom will just have joy in doing this and uh, just feel your love, that she'll feel your love in a new way and that baby will feel love and we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And, uh, you know, I've been ministering for a long time but that's the first time I ever had that kind of word and. I believe it's helping some of those great moms out there. You know, I had a great mom, and uh, I thank God for, for that. And my mom and dad were married for 66 years. And uh, 
they were great examples to uh, the rest of their children. Uh, let, me, let me tell you a story here, if I could, uh, kind of divert from our subject matter today, but I think this will bless you. Last years of my life, of my uh, mom's life, uh, you know, I'm still living. I meant to say my mom's wife, life, okay? Not the last years of my life. I'm still here. I got plenty of years left. Okay. Uh, the last year of my mother's life uh, were very difficult. She suffered from dementia and Alzheimer's, and uh, that went on for about six, five or six years. But the last two years were uh, excruciating for her but also for the whole family. She has a big family. Was, she had one daughter, five of us sons, and uh, we would all take turns caring for mom. We tried to be there as much as possible, as well as my dad, and it was really hard on my father. You know, they've been married for all these years. So uh, in the final days of her sickness, I didn't know it were the final days, but I was undecided about it overseas trip to Ukraine. Uh, the possibility was there for me to go and minister, but I wasn't sure that I should do that. Uh, in addition, it was about, uh, it was a youth conference, and uh, I don't particularly, I don't have a particularly strong anointing in youth. I normally minister to adults, and uh, my wife, she loves young people and uh, teens. Uh, she's minister for many years with them, but I'm largely my ministry is with adults. So uh, there was a youth conference going on and I didn't know whether I should go or not. Of course, I was praying about it. I asked the, the pastor in Kiev and he said, sure, you can come. So I decided to go to the youth conference, uh, kind of different for me, something new, but uh, I said, why not? You know, I'll preach the word and God always honors his word anyway. So I go to the youth conference and uh, I knew, you know, I knew a percentage of these young people, uh, awesome young guys and girls, and they want to serve the Lord. And so uh, there were different speakers, one speaker right after another, then another one. Uh, then finally, it was my turn. I wasn't like, you know, the featured speaker. I wasn't the main speaker. I was just one of maybe five or six and uh, the other adult speakers and teachers, they were doing a good job. And I said, well, okay. So my turn came and I spoke to the young people and uh, the topic of my message was drugs, sex, and alcohol. Well, obviously I got their attention, attention right away. And I repeated it. I said, I'm gonna talk to you young people today about drugs and sex. And I dragged out the word sex and alcohol. Well, they're all looking at me real stone faced. You know, I got their attention. So we talked about those things and God can keep you from those evils. And uh, I give glory to the Lord because there was five or six speakers that day. And when I was finished talking, they applauded for me. And they, I was the only one they applauded for. So this has got to be God. So everything went real well. I was real happy. And I uh, love those young people. Some of them are married today. They got children. It's just a great blessing. Well, uh, I was notified right after the meeting that uh, I needed to call my wife back in the United States. It was important. It was about my mother's condition. It was getting very bad. So we rushed out of the conference center. Uh, actually, I went over to the pastor's uh, home and we were able to uh, do a FaceTime with my uh, phone, iPhone, you know, FaceTime, you can see the person. And uh, boy, that's a miracle, isn't it? So I dialed up my wife real quick and I was talking to her and I said, honey, what's the situation? She said, uh, Rick, your mom is dying. Uh, she's gonna be gone pretty soon. And uh, I said, really? And she said, yeah. I said, well, where's mom? Where, where are you now? Uh, you're with mom, right? My, my uh, wife was watching my mother as well. So uh, she said, uh, yeah, she's in the other room. I said, well, take the phone into the other room. And uh, I want to say goodbye to my mom. So 
Uh, now remember, I'm 6,000, 7,000 miles away from her. I'm in Kiev, Ukraine. She's in Baltimore, Maryland. And so my wife took the iPhone, it's on FaceTime. She took it into the other room. She placed it in front of my mother, her face, and I was talking to my mother. And uh, I said, Mom, uh, we love you, I love you. And we'll see you in heaven soon. And my mom passed away right there while I was watching her on FaceTime. Uh, I share that because it speaks of the goodness of God. Uh, you know, my dad, my brothers, they watched my mom all the time. We were there every day. But for some reason that I still don't understand to this day, uh, in those final moments, my dad wasn't with uh, his wife. My four brothers were, were not there. It was just uh, her one daughter, my sister, and my wife. And I was the only son, the only male that had an opportunity to say goodbye and see my mom pass from earth to eternity. Just wanted to share that because this is the God who loves us. This is the God who saved us. And this is the God who brings victory to us moment by moment, day by day. His truth, his faithfulness is our shield and our buckler. And I think this kind of reverts back to the beginning of the show when I gave that testimony about, uh, you know, I had always, going through a difficult time, I was just rebuking the devil all day. And uh, my friend said, Rick, uh, you should have your mind on Jesus. And this story about my mom, how it happened, uh, of course, I was sorry to see her go, but it was her time. She was suffering tremendously. The whole family was suffering. It was the right time. But, oh, the goodness of God, you know, the wonderfulness of God that through modern technology, I was able to say goodbye to her. And I'll never, never forget that great, I call it a miracle. I'll never forget that great miracle that God did for me. And you've had miracles in your life miracles because of the goodness and love of God. So always remember that, you know, I didn't plan to talk about that, but uh, we're grounded in the Word of God. We're grounded in the love of God. He's a loving God. And uh, to be honest, most days I begin my mornings by praying, and uh, I usually start by meditating on His love. You know, I love him. That's a miracle. <laughs> That's a miracle of grace that any of us love God. But I love God, but what's a greater truth is he loves me. And uh, that's how I start most of my mornings. He loves me. Oh, I love God, but he loves me. God loves me. So much so that he sent his son you know, I don't care how many years you've been in the Lord, you never get past, you never get beyond the cross of Jesus Christ. You never get past the blood of the Lamb. You never get past the resurrection of Jesus. And I add this because I believe it's so important. You never forget the stripes of Jesus as well, because by those stripes you were healed. And all salvation and healing and deliverance and freedom from oppression, it all starts with a God who loves us, a God who has the best for us, a God who sent his son to die for us. God bless all of you. Wow, what a way to end. I didn't plan it but he did. So we hope to see you tomorrow. Please email, write to us. You see our address at the bottom of the screen. God bless you. Have a great time in the Lord. And remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Thank you.